All right, gang, here we go. So this is for physics. Uh, we're doing this video about your new lab that we're doing here in a little bit, about specific heat. All right, so it's been probably a while since you've had to do a full-fledged lab report. Remember, uh, if you're when you're writing a lab report, always refer back to the, uh, the example lab report that I give you on Google Classroom. You make sure you have titles, you need purpose, procedure, data tables, analysis, conclusion, the whole shebang. All right, so the specific heat lab, um, essentially what we're doing is we're using these ideas of thermodynamics that we've talked about the last couple of class periods in order to find the identity of an unknown metal, okay, based on its specific heat, okay. So you know that we've been using this formula, Q is equal to mc delta t right and we refer to this as the mcat formula and we know that this value this c value here this is the specific heat of whatever uh, metal or whatever object we're talking about and everything has a different specific heat and so um, because everything has a distinct specific heat uh, we can use that to identify a metal so really we can find c is equal to q over m uh, delta t. Now, change in temperature, that's easy. You just measure it at two different temperatures. And the mass is easy. You just stick it on a balance. This q value, though, this is a little bit more interesting to try to find because this is, this is the energy or the heat that is transferred. Okay. So in order to measure how much heat is transferred, we're going to use a device called a calorimeter. Okay. Calorimeter, essentially what we're going to be using is we're going to be using a cup or metal, two metal cups that are kind of nestled into each other, kind of like this. As you can tell, I'm a great artist. Okay, and you're going to be filling this guy with water. Okay, and then it comes with a lid, so you'll have a lid on it when you actually run your your experiment here. And you'll put a hot piece of metal in here, and then with a temperature probe. All right, you'll be able to figure out uh, what the temperature changes of the water before and after, and then using uh, the MCAT formula you can actually figure out how much the Q was absorbed by the water. Now, because we're doing it in a calorimeter, we assume that this, uh, this container loses negligible amount of energy or negligible amount of heat. Okay, so it's, uh, it's insulated, so it doesn't lose a bunch of heat. That's kind of the idea of using this container. Okay, and so because we can assume that, we can assume that the any energy, okay, energy that is gained um, by the water because we're going to put in a hot piece of a metal and figure out how much temperature is uh, risen so any energy that is gained by the water is automatically has to come from the the hot piece of metal so this is equal to the energy okay uh, lost by the metal All right and so that's kind of the crux of our lab here this is kind of like what everything hinges on is so if we can figure out how much energy the water gained we can assume that this is the same amount of energy that the metal lost and we can plug that in for our Q and our MCAT formula to solve for our C and then from the C we can identify an unknown. All right. So remember when you're writing your lab report, the first section you need is a purpose. It should be one to three sentences. Talk about what are you finding, how, what do you expect to find, all the stuff that I just talked about on the previous slide. I also want you to include this table. Okay, you'll have to insert table and put in these rows, put in these values, so on and so forth. These are your unknowns. Now, um, just based on, you know, uh, availability and stuff like that we might have to change things on the fly so don't be worried if things get thrown off notice that lead and bismuth have the same specific heat we'll have to solve that problem on the day of but uh, so that kind of thing anyway so throw these guys in here so these are your specific heat values these are the C's uh, the, the second column this is that C value that you're going to be looking at in order to identify your unknown so after you do your math you'll be like oh I had like 900 uh, specific heat I must have been looking at aluminum or something like that okay and you're trying to identify which unknown you had all right cool so a couple procedures all right uh, first of all we always talk about safety Okay, we're going to be messing with hot metals, so you need, uh, say, goggles. Okay, we're going to be wearing goggles for this lab. Um, you also have to use hot hands, all right, and uh, tongs as needed. Okay, all right. Um, 
so for step number one so when you're doing your procedure you're going to take these do not copy and paste them because this does not have enough information you need to type out step by step exactly what you're going to be doing in the procedure all right so step number one you get a calorimeter and you need to get its mass all right then fill that calorimeter about three quarters full with water and then find the new mass okay pretty easy so remember those calorimeters are those big silver you know guys shaped like this just essentially cups you know and they're hollow on the inside and you put another cup inside of it and then you should also have a lid and these lids have holes in them like one big hole some of them are the holes off to the side it doesn't really matter you also need um, logger pro launched on your laptop okay you also need a temperature probe and your little box there to plug it all in okay a launch logger pro and uh, make sure your equipment's set up all right so you're going to have you know your after you've mastered colorimeter so you're going to have your colorimeter here like so all right and then you're going to have your lid ready to go okay depending on which one you get your lid may or may not uh, have a big hole for you to put the metal in so you might have to have the lid off to the side i would suggest uh, using a ring stand okay and um, use a ring stand this is my ring stand all right and then like this you can use a test tube clamp all right test tube clamp to hold your temperature probe for you all right might make it easier okay but really you don't necessarily need it so there's my test tube clamp and there's my temperature probe hey, that doesn't look actually half bad really all right and then your temperature probe is going to go through that hole right there like so all right and then that's going to go off in your box really do you need this setup no not really you could really just hold it there uh, but this kind of makes it easier all right um, after you've got this all set up or decided however you're going to do it uh, you, you should be getting temperature values make sure you record the temperature of the water from the calorimeter all right and then uh, then go over to the furnace all right and you're going to pick up an unknown metal make sure you use tongs or hot hands or both all right, and make it easier to pick up. These things are going to be hot. Do not touch them with your bare hands. As soon as you take it out of the furnace, we're probably going to get to the point um, where everybody's going to take them out of the furnace at about the same time because when the furnace opens, we'll lose a lot of heat. Okay, so we'll probably, so we'll all do it at once. All right, and so when we pull it out of the furnace, um, you're going to have to move pretty quickly from there on. Okay, so before we open the furnace, record the temperature of the furnace will be recorded on, on the front of the furnace. It should be displayed on the little digital readout. Okay, record that temperature, and we'll just assume that that's the temperature of the metal. So you need that value as well. All right. <clears throat> After you get your metal, okay, walk quickly over to your colorimeter. Don't run because you just got a hot piece of metal in your hand, and you're going to click collect on Logger Pro. That's that big green play button, and place the hot metal into the calorimeter close the lid and then start stirring and you should see the temperature value start to rise on your uh, calorimeter okay the, um, the temperature probe like you'll start somewhere probably a little bit lower than room temperature so around 25 degrees Celsius 24 degrees Celsius or so and it should raise now depending on what metal you had it'll raise more or less right and then you're just really looking for the temperature value to plateau okay so essentially your temperature value should you know start low spike up and then they should level out and then you should see them come back down again but you know really but the, we're really looking for this high value up here okay um, so when it stops rising you can click stop on honestly like if we get a you know a graph like this like just record uh, this this guy up here and you can just get a nice graph and really you want this high temperature okay so the final temperature really it's the high temperature that we want all right okay um, and then you can once it's all cooled down pull your metal piece out and put it on uh, you need to find the balance or you need to get the mass of that balance or the metal piece on a balance all right and then once you've done that you can place it back in the furnace for the next hour to use all right um, and that's really it for the procedure pretty simple you do need a data table remember data tables need a title okay so make sure you put a title in there okay and then so you'll need it's just some ideas then now this I'm not gonna give you everything but this is just a thing to get you started okay so you need the mass of the crucible okay and you need the mass of the you know the water with the crucible okay and you need um, the temperature of the water initially okay 
and the temperature of the water final okay you need the temperature of the metal initial okay uh, mass of the metal okay just some ideas so make sure it's a nice table it looks nice so on and so forth so this is what you need for the pre-lab up to this point so you need um, you need the purpose procedure and data table all right that's what you need for the pre-lab all right you'll turn this in via Google classroom so we can grade it at least for this year all right after that you'll do the analysis now this is all the math that you'll do remember in the analysis section we don't do any explanations there's no words explaining what the math is simply number your steps what values you're doing okay plug them in there so on and so forth so the and just you know do these so temperature change of the metal at final minus initial temperature change of the water you know so this is the metal sample not the crucible don't be confused okay and then um, this is the temperature change of the water, simply final minus initial mass of the water. So this is going to be the mass of the water plus the crucible minus the crucible. Okay. Then you're going to find the energy change, right? And we just assume that the energy change of the water is equal to the energy change of the metal. So you can take the mass of the water times the specific heat of the water. Okay. Make sure you use the right units. Think about units when you're doing this. All right. Okay. Times the temperature change of the water. And then you can use that to find the specific heat of the water based on the formula I gave you at the beginning of the, uh, this PowerPoint. All right, and then I want you to just give me the identification of the metal. So which metal do you think you have based on the specific heat you calculated, number five? And then from that, find the percent error. Okay, so the percent error, just for you to help you remember from chemistry, this is your calculations to find percent error. Exper experimental minus uh, theoretical over theoretical times 100. All right, and then finally your conclusion. Okay, I want you to summarize the experiment. One to two sentences. What did you do? How did you do it? Essentially, just restate your procedure or your purpose. Excuse me. Um, and then walk me through how you found specific heat. Um, do not give me blow by blow of the calculations. I don't want to read that. I want you to summarize. I want to understand that you. I want to see that you understand what the calculations were talking about. All right. Uh, the fact that you can go bullet by bullet based on what I said you told you isn't really worth much. I want to see that you knew what you were doing and you understood why you took the steps you did. All right. Tell me what your medal was. Cite evidence. Okay. All right. Um, use you know use the numbers that we did. Um, use numbers from the analysis. Okay. This will go a long way. All right. What was your percent error? All right. What could have caused your error? All right. Remember, human error is no good. Every error is human error. So just saying, oh, it was caused by human error, that's a big zero. You ain't getting no points from me for a human error. Okay. So make sure you're more specific. What exactly could have caused it? Did you spend too long walking over the room with the metal? Did you, you know, uh, drop it? Did you, you know, uh, you know, did you forget to click collect on your temperature probe? Yeah, I don't know. So, you know, if any of those things happen, you should have probably started over. But, you know, so on and so forth. So try to come up with some valid reasons to give you the error you did. All right. And then I also want you to answer the following uh, during the conclusion paragraph. Okay. Um, so if equal masses of two metals are heated to a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, which would cause a more severe burn, the one with higher specific heat or the one with lower specific heat? And I want you to explain that. So essentially, just kind of do you understand what specific heat is talking about? Um, and just kind of answer that question. One or two sentences would be plenty. Okay. And so that's the end of the lab here. Should be pretty fun. Uh, be a great experiment. See if it works. See if we can identify what those metals are. And let me know if you have any questions.